Red Dead 2, Fallout 76, Let's Go Pika and Eevee, these releases have been an event of their own lately. As with any new game hitting the market, news media, YouTubers, and gamers themselves love to stir up drama for the sake of stirring up drama. Fanboys, naysayers, and the occasional sensible rational reviewer populate the first few weeks of a game's release. In the background, humbling a peak of about 1,500 players, sits Hellgate London, a game that has seen a very hypocritical, interesting hounding that I've ever seen as of late. Originally, my review of Hellgate London was going to be my usual brief look at the game with my own opinions thrown in. I thought this was just a re-release of the 2007 version, not a 2018 different version of sorts, kinda. However, after being busy and having to wait a few days before I could actually work on the video, I've watched the community divide almost instantly in a span of a couple days. I had to make this review as sort of a warning and as my own little take on this new product. As I was sort of excited for this release and I did want to make a video on it and Matt did make an amazing thumbnail. So I thought, yeah, this is a 2018 release, but you know what? I'm going to I'm going to review it myself. But before we can get to any of all that madness, we must look at the background as per usual in my videos, which will explain why I'm still interested in reviewing a modern release. Hellgate London is an MMO developed by Flagship Studios. It released on October 31st, 2007. Flagship Studios had a team of former Blizzard employees, some of which who have seen the creation of the Diablo series. And yeah, that sounds all good and all, but the game did not review well whatsoever. I was 11 or 12 years old when this game released. I was super into anything MMO. I managed to convince my folks to buy it for me, as it was rare for me to want anything for the family PC. PC for me at the time was just for MMOs and Flash games. I remember being turned off by the visuals, but loving the gameplay. Sort of like The Secret World, another one of my favorite MMOs, this game took place in the modern world, which you didn't really see a whole lot. This release on Steam gave me a perfect opportunity to showcase the game to you guys and gals and give it a proper review. I was just expecting a re-release of the original and excited to see that it was single player only. The beauty in this is that if it was an MMO again, the servers could shut down again and I would be left with missing it again. However, the original release did have a single player mode packaged with it, so who knows why they didn't make it multi again? Probably finances, but we'll get into that in a second. For now, imagine if any other MMO did this. Imagine being able to play City of Heroes, or Tabula Rasa, or Chaos Online, or Matrix Online, or any MMO that you love that has died. Imagine being able to play it single player, at least to relive what used to be. Imagine being able to play DC Universe, but with no microtransactions and all expansions included. Yeah, there might not be no players around, but at least you could experience that game again without it just being vague memories. That's what this release is. A microtransaction free, all expansions included, dead MMO resurrected so you can at least play the husk left behind to relive memories. But, wait, what? M mixed reviews? Here comes the second part of this history lesson. This is not the 2007 release. I mean, obviously, I've kind of hinted that many times in this review already, haven't I? 2008 was sort of a dark time for flagship studios as they filed for bankruptcy. All their stuff was seized as funding for some bank that they owed money. This meant the development of the game halted. Namco Bandai provided like a free ongoing US server support until about 2009. Handbit Soft, a Southeast Asian company, acquired the game and redeveloped it as to a free-to-play Hellgate London Resurrection, and it was only based in South Korea at the time. In 2014, Hellgate Global was announced, and they were going to add Tokyo and all this sort of stuff. And there was also a slew of fan-made mods to make the game playable and better. Think about Star Wars Galaxies. Modders have found ways to keep that going, even though it's dead, completely dead. This is sort of the case with the American audience of Hellgate London. This release is not the same as this, if that wasn't obvious. I mean, you can see this in the character customization. The new release screams Southeast Asia, hence why I named my character. And then here's my copy of the original Western release. While titled Hellgate London, this is basically Hellgate Global with everything included. For some reason, this is sort of a bad thing. Things change, people get mad. Things stay the same, people get mad. It's like classic Call of Duty logic right there. 
With the exception of the character models and minute details, this plays just like how I remember. But truth be told, if you have the original CD-ROM, you could probably stick with that and be happy. This new release does include some expansions along with another one on the way, and, and you don't have to worry about microtransaction stores, and you can get premium items. In fact, you can get everything that was originally in the game just without having to pay real money or play in multiplayer. And that's one fact that a lot of people like to leave out. Even if you were to play the original CD-ROM version, there's only so much you can play. A lot of it was left in multiplayer. If you wondered why this intro was sort of a mess, one, it's because I'm really tired, and two, it's because it is. This game has switched hands. It hasn't done much in the past decade to modernize it, so it feels like it's the same game, but yet they made very small details to make it its own game, and it's head exploding. The Steam forums don't help either. It's a hodgepodge mess of people picking the game apart, trying to find out the differences and point out why those are bad. There are people who don't understand why reviving is good. There's a weird divide of extremes. Either people are praising the fact it hasn't changed or some who are upset are about the design choice. Some say the graphics are good. Some say the graphics are bad. And it's just... <laughs> I, it, it's a very interesting, weird look at this game. It's like, like you can't even point to someone who likes the game and say, bro, your nostalgia glasses are on too tight. Because there's a guy right next to him who also has nostalgia glasses on. And they hate it. It's very weird. It's it's like it's strange. The game is on sale for ten bucks and off sale it's like thirteen. Maybe it's because I'm a grown man with a steady income, but thirteen bucks is cheap for a game with this content in it. There are more expensive games with a much higher degree of price that do not include a fraction of what this game has to offer. If you're new and you have no idea what this game is, I implore you to stay away from the forms and Steam reviews, or you'll be scratching your head because there is so much back and forth, it's intense and impossible to pick a side and to form your own opinion. This game is like Brink. It was handed its fate long before the official release as people had already made up their minds. The same could be said about Fallout 76. The positive and negatives are so drastically different that it's really hard to see both sides and still have a clear picture of what this game is. But for $10 and a two-hour refund policy, you can experiment. If you're a returning vet of the game, you probably don't need this unless you're a diehard fan and just want more Hellgate. It, it's a single-player MMO. If you've played any MMO from WoW to Secret World to DC Universe to pretty much anything, then you know how this game plays. You have the hotkeys, you have the leveling system, you have the spamming left-click to attack, you have the animations that play out very wow like you kill stuff you level up you get loot you scrap that loot for ingredients because it doesn't fit your class you find better armor and weapons almost instantly there's in-game events side quests places to explore stuff to go see it's it's just an mmo like i i wish i i mean i, I don't know how much i could explain it there's very there's a variety of classes to choose from some of your traditional soldier-like classes, then you have your guys with swords and shields, and then you have your magic-like classes, all of which serve their own purpose. But you probably don't want to pick a class that focuses in support, because, well, you're going to be by yourself. I picked a ranged class, which works for me as any MMO I play is a ranged class, period. It's always been my thing. But seeing as I play by myself, this might have not have been a really good idea, as I don't have someone else to take aggro while I shoot from afar. But so far, I've had no problems. The biggest, biggest complaint I have personally is the fact that there was no further attempts to push this change as a single-player experience. Chat boxes are still on the screen, and many in-game tooltips mention the existence of other players. In fact, you also get titles that you can wear above your head, even though no one's going to see it. From what I can see, they took the MMO, made it single player only, and then shipped it. That doesn't really seem like there was much more changes been made there. But this is a very small complaint as it doesn't affect gameplay a whole lot. It's just like, why is it still here? As I mentioned before, I haven't had any problems playing this game. I think the difficulty's been scaled down to accommodate the lone wolf player. But I haven't gotten to the late game yet, so we'll see if this changes because I will be playing this. Unlike some other MMO that just released, there are a ton of NPCs in the game. And they do sort of bring life. I'm actually surprised. I mean, you can... Seeing as I played this game as a kid, I, I'm used to seeing a bunch of people huddled around one NPC. But it's kind of refreshing to be able to run around by yourself and just see other NPCs. It's like... 
I don't know. It's kind of like uh, there's a lot more room to move around. I don't know. I kind of like it. I played MMO solo most of the time anyway. Overall, the game looks and feels like the normal one with a minor rearrangement of NPCs and quests. Like, here's what the original looks like, and here is the re-release. I think the fact that the newer one has no DirectX 10 support is the only real graphical difference. It's just a good experience for nostalgia seekers or someone who truly wants a single-player MMO. And to be honest, if you're if you're a purist and want the original release unchanged, like 100%, you can find this game on eBay sometimes. However, it's going to be a lot more than what you're paying for on Steam. If you don't want to spend any money, there's fan-made servers that are still running and 100% free to play. The Steam version is a no-hassle and no-fuss sort of way to get this game. I can't do this game justice. I really can't because in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking, oh, I thought I was doing a review of the 2007 release and now I'm reviewing a 2018 game on a YouTube channel that's about preserving PC game in history. But I guess... This being a remake, quotation marks of sorts, is still keeping to the idea of classic PC gaming, I guess. But I also can't do it justice because no matter what I say or do, there's going to be a looming controversy about this game. The design choice has sort of made people mad and not mad at the same time. They wiped away microtransactions, which I thought would be enough to have a parade, but it's just shrouded over this, this want for it to be the original 2007 release but also updated graphics and textures at the same time. For me, I'm just happy that a game company re-released the game, made it single player only, no microtransactions. In this current day, that is rare. In fact, I can't think of an MMO that got released and made single player only. Like, I just, I don't, I can't think of a time that's happened. Oh, man, this is giving me a headache. So, you know what? I'm just going to say this. For 13 bucks, it's a great experiment. And if you're a vet of the series, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And because there's a free-to-play version that still exists, and because the CD-ROM version still works, I'm going to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, as this is a very situational type product. If you want to watch me play this after I finish Shogo, please let me know, and maybe I'll play it for a while. I won't play it through the whole thing, but I'll play it for a while. And I'm going to be playing it anyway, so this will be a good chance to kill two birds with one stone. And I might not pick a ranger class. I may play something different, so it's a little bit more unexpected and i might you know have to actually learn because i played as the ranger class back in 2007 as well if you have your own opinion about the game please tell me what you think down below in the comments but let's do it better than the steam forums and maybe you can open my eyes to something i didn't pay attention to before as i've said i've only played this game for a little bit just enough to be able to review it anyway i hope you enjoyed this weird video and the next set of reviews will go back to the normal format I'm Elijah Black with Senior Own Fossil. I'm going to take a nap before this 12-hour shift.